Hey you guys, so I am here today to answer some questions. Over the last year I've gotten, well actually it's been over the last four or five years I get lots of questions, um, but over this past year when I was running Rare Love and um, really trying to kind of sum up how I've been improving on different protocols, um, I started getting some really amazing questions from my tar love cyst and adhesive arachnoiditis community and um, I've answered some of those questions but just kind of taking them one at a time in a video and this one's going to be like the other two part to uh, the other question I answered. One was about uh, how did I know if I had adhesive arachnoiditis. This one is going to be how did I know I had tar love cyst disease. Um, Okay, and then the third one, which will be in another link, um, is how did I know I needed to find out more about Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Okay, so Tarlov cyst disease is where my journey like really hit the floor and got going. Um, in the year leading up to finally walking into the Tarlov cyst um, doctor's office, my body had completely fallen apart and I am not over exaggerating. <laughs> um, and it was like basically the year following our third son's birth. After he was about four months old, I started getting back into jogging with the kids, um, down to the park in our neighborhood. And I mean, within a week or two into that, I injured my foot, I thought. And then, you know, I rested and recovered, went to the chiropractor, I felt better, did it again, and then it seemed like my whole leg had become injured. Um, my foot was still giving me problems, but now my hip was in excruciating pain. So I went back to the chiropractor and we started doing some IT band therapy and doing, um, you know, rolling the, the like foam rollers and massaging up against the IT band. So things I was very familiar with, you know, I've been active my whole life. I've always used exercise and food as medicine. So I'm really comfortable with, you know, knowing that there are phases your body goes through when you're readjusting to an activity. So I really wasn't alarmed at this point that anything wrong was even going on with my foot or hip. It was just normal, you know, post-birth stuff. I always had a lot of extra, um, lax in my joints after giving birth. Um, now I know it's way more than normal because of the EDS, but that's another video. Um, so anyways, by the third appointment at my chiropractor's office, spring of 2014, he said he wanted to refer me to a podiatrist because he said, this is outside of my expertise. Everything I'm seeing on your imaging isn't really showing anything that, that I can help you with and you're just continuing to feel worse and I want to get you active again, so go to the podiatrist. So I went to the podiatrist and I started orthotics and I started physical therapy and because <clears throat> the theory was that my whole leg was hurting because my foot had issues. Um, and we found out there was an aroma in my foot. Well then, I mean, by that summer, it was both feet <laughs> and then it was both hips. And before I knew it, I was going through another round of physical therapy and cortisone injections in my feet where the neuromas were. And none of it was really working. And I was in severe pain when I had those injections in my feet. It would shoot like a nerve rocket right up to my tailbone and hurt my entire like pelvic region down to my feet. And I don't know if that has to do with the Tarlov cyst or not. Um, but I don't think that's normal. <laughs> I mean, I was having to use pain meds just to get through the injections. I was in tears the second time I came in to use them and he's like, or to get the injection, he's like, well, hey, you know, let's give you some pain meds for the first few days afterwards. You shouldn't be hurting like that. Of course, that was the, whatever, I don't know. I mean, don't even get me started about giving pain meds because there is a time and a place for them. Um, but let's see. So moving forward, moving forward, I could not walk barefoot at all by summer of 2014. Couldn't walk barefoot. Um, could barely walk. I had to start canceling play dates with my mom's group from church. Um, and it was really tough. And then by that fall, it just got worse, y'all. Like my back went out in October and I couldn't move off the couch. I was in tears. It was awful. Um, 
and it just quickly spiraled into, you know, severe pain, barely able to drive, barely able to sit, um, went and had injections for my back, unknowing, you know, like knew that we knew there was an incidental finding of Tarlov cysts, but we didn't know that like my pain management doctor was like, oh, you know, those, those aren't it. Those aren't it. It's this little tiny two millimeter bulge in your lumbar spine from L3, L4. So, you know, my sister-in-law had like a nine millimeter bulge and that one took her out. She's kind of surprised that a two millimeter bulge would do it, but she had such good success with the ESI injections and physical therapy that I was like, shoot, I'll try it. Let's do it. It's minimally invasive. Let's get going. Man, it was, it was just, I pushed so hard during this time. And that was when I started to develop neck and head symptoms and upright symptoms. And I didn't even realize that like the ESI injections were causing this. And nobody told me that the ESI injections could be causing this or, or adding fuel to the fire or, you know what I mean? But anyways, and I'm just such a tell me what to do and I'll do it kind of person when it comes to getting results. Um, I just never questioned it. So, you know, it's not their fault. It's not really my fault. I just didn't know. You don't know until you know. And, um, man, I just remember by like winter, you know, trying to get ready for the kids' birthday parties that November, it was like, Oh, it was so hard. I was already on pain meds all day, every day. And it was just tough. It was really tough. I was in a lot of pain and having to start laying down a lot, getting these really bad headaches. I didn't know where they were coming from. Um, but anyways, so then I started feeling like I was sitting on a pointy rock. Like I will never forget the first time it happened. I was sitting like next to the kid's bathtub, um, you know, getting ready to to fill up the bath for their little bathtub time because they were like, you know, one, three, and almost five. And I kept moving around thinking I was sitting on a rock. I kept trying to figure out what I was sitting on and there was nothing there. And that feeling kept getting worse and worse and worse as the days went on. And it was the most uncomfortable feeling. And then it progressed to, I have no tactful way to say this, but it was as if there was a golf ball with metal spikes all over it inside my bottom. Like somebody pushed it up there and it was there to deal with 24 seven. It was way worse when I sat and then it was still bad when I was laying down. And that was the most horrible feeling in the entire world. Um, at that point I had, I had developed foot drop in my left leg. I could not, I mean, I've, I've been in, I was in dance, um, my entire life growing up. And this was a point at, you know, and so I stretched my whole life. I was always active. Um, but by this time I couldn't even stretch. I couldn't, I mean, I could stretch, but I could not extend my left leg, nor could I put my foot up like this. It was like drop down. So that was very, very, very abnormal for my body. And it, it was just very strange. So, um, around March of 2015, uh, I had already made friends with the like nutrition department person at our natural food store <laughs> over the last eight months I'd been buying like everything I could from willow bark to arnica to anything I could to try to help turmeric to help with inflammation um and so anyways she was like hey so I know you said that your chiropractor kicked you out because you need to go see a doctor but would you consider seeing the chiropractor that my husband just saw she's just totally different than anybody I've ever known um and I was like N okay, you know, like more money. And, oh, it's just so much, you know, like by that point I'd been to so many doctors and, and I'd just been getting worse. And she's like, well, you know, she has a new patient special. And I was like, fine, I'll go see her, you know? And I remember praying about it on the way there, going with the three boys and they were all so little. And, um, man, I just, when I met her, <laughs> I was like, yep, this is where I'm supposed to be. I didn't know why, but I did. And, um, she was the one that got me started towards treatment. Uh, believe it or not, you know, chiropractors don't usually recommend surgery, but um, 
It just so happened that her cousin had just so happened to come here a year and a half ago and just so happened to work for the world's best Tarlov cyst surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> and anyways, so all that came together after she spent an hour going over my entire history and symptoms. And so in our follow-up appointment, she was like, hey, boom, here's the list of Tarlov's symptoms. Here's the list of your symptoms. They match 110%. I called my cousin. He, she works for Dr. Fagenbaum. I sent a referral and you need to get, you know, this, I highly recommend you go in there. And I was like, okay, well, this was God then. And, um, yeah. So that's how I knew I had Tarlov's cyst disease because when I went to that appointment with Dr. Fagenbaum, he didn't even recommend a nerve block. He could see by my foot drop, by the way that I couldn't balance on one leg. I mean, there was so many different tests he did and I couldn't even sit up during the appointment. I had to lay in the lobby and I had to lay in the you know patient room. Um, I did thankfully find one really cool resource. Where'd it go? When I was there, ta-da! This thing, this is the Tush Kush. It's the one that, it's the exact one that Dr. Fagenbaum has in off his office. It's the compact one, so it fits really well in the car seat, but it's also more dense than the original. Um, it has this nice little sacral U-shaped hole so that, you know, when when I'm sitting for a while, um, you know, forever, I had to carry it with me. I had a little Tush Kush bag and I took it everywhere I went. And today, for the first time sitting here to do a video, I took the Tush Kush out, which just tells you amazing things because I felt more comfortable without the Tush Kush than with it. I don't think I've been able to say that in four and a half, five years. I mean, five years, five years, five years. <sighs> so anyways, I hope that answers your question as to how I knew I had Tarlov cyst disease in my sacrum. I know everybody's story is different. Um, I've walked with so many people through their journey from questioning to diagnosis to surgery and recovery and you are all amazing and I respect every one of you for everything you've had to go through with your families and everything you've had to overcome in your mindset and with your body and your lifestyle and everything and I love you and I just appreciate all of you speaking life into me on my journey and I am just always going to be forever grateful for my Tarlovs' friends that I made on this journey so if you have any other questions if I did not answer something clearly or you wanted me to elaborate on something that I touched on in this video, please leave your questions in the comments below and I will answer them as soon as possible. Okay. Thank y'all. God bless.